Hello, everybody. My name is Galen Johnson, and I supervise prevention programs for San Juan. And tonight, I'm excited to present to you um, a very special presentation uh, by the Soul Project. Um, the Soul Project will be presenting on how tobacco uh, companies uh, target African Americans and other people of color. And uh, this presentation is sponsored by prevention programs and the To Be uh, Prevention uh, Grant in collaboration with the FACE Department. So without taking any more of your time, I really would like to introduce to you the Soul Project presenters tonight. We have Project Director Twyla Laster and Community Engagement Coordinator Richardson Davies. Thank you, Galen. Appreciate that. It's uh, great to be here with you guys this evening. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, can you guys see that? All right, so thank you guys for having us this uh, having us this evening for the Family Matters Tobacco Awareness Workshop. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you for the intro, Galen. I appreciate that. Uh, and uh, thank you, Benita, as well. And thank you all for attending. Um, so as you heard, my name is Richardson Davis. I am the Community Engagement Coordinator with, coordinator with Saving Our Legacy. Uh, also known as the Soul Project. So today I'll be discussing the predatory marketing tactics on uh, Black and communities of color. And I wanted to go ahead and start off with a little bit of a video to tell you more about our organization. One out of four African Americans smoke and one out of four persons at or below poverty level also smoke. Rich, increase the volume just a little bit, please. Tobacco ads or alcohol ads in the community, they just kind of become a part of the fabric. But then when you become aware that the industry itself is specifically marketing to you, you start to notice exactly how much is in your community. If you can change a policy like restricting the sale of menthol and flavored tobacco products from being accessed, you have really changed the health of the entire community. The Soul Project advocates for smoke-free, healthy communities. So our project specifically advocates for African Americans to quit smoking, and not only to quit, but to stay quit. What we want to do is reduce tobacco use in the African-American community in the Sacramento and the Gold Country region of California. And we do that through policy and advocacy work. We have three objectives that we're working on right now, and those have to do with reducing secondhand smoke in outdoor areas like restaurants, parks, that nature. A second objective we have is to restrict menthol and flavored tobacco products. And those types of products are targeted specifically to African-Americans and youth. So we work with lawmakers to reduce access to those kind of products. We joined forces with the Soul Group and started collaborating. It took us a couple of years, but in the end, we adopted a policy that will limit where tobacco can go, keeping it away from schools at a farther distance. And probably the biggest step we made is we limited what type of tobacco products can be sold in the city of Sacramento. Those products that clearly marketed young people will be gone. They won't be on the shelves in the city of Sacramento any longer. Our third objective is to engage youth. We want to teach them how to do this kind of work that we're doing and the rewards that they get. Soul really brought to this dialogue the voice of the youth who are saying, you're targeting us. You are marketing to us. You're using characters that are meaningful to our generation. You're using flavors that adults would not be interested in. And this is going to change the trajectory of the lives of our generation. And that needs to be addressed. One Community Health was really excited to partner with the Soul Project. They're very easy to work with. They are able to break down information. So they're able to work with all levels of community members and help them understand what resources are available to them and how to help. It's been a great partnership and we're really excited about that. 
I have to say I'm proud as a, a public health servant and also a member of this community. The work that we do with the Soul Project and with Luna Health as a partner has had some very important long-term successes. It lets us know that the work that we're doing in the community resonates long-term, that we're not just here to pass a policy and move on to the next community, but that we are making a difference in the hearts and the minds of people over the course of time. All right, guys, that was just a little bit more background on our organization. Um, thank you for watching. And so next, here's a little bit of an overview of what we'll be talking about today. Uh, we'll be talking about the predatory marketing in the vape and tobacco industry, targeted advertising, tobacco and vape products, menthol and vape flavors, vapes, and the tobacco and vape industry. So this is our staff. Um, we have Kimberly Bankston Lee, whom you saw in the video. Uh, we have Twyla Lasto, who is also on the call. Uh, we have myself, and we also have Abdul Aziz Atasi. So like you heard in the video, um, we are based in Sacramento, California, but we work in 14 counties uh, in Northern California. We have a total of six objectives centered around these three topics. We encourage decision makers to adopt policies, Restrict the, restrict the sale of flavored and menthol tobacco, update smoking definitions, recruit and train youth as advocates in tobacco prevention. So a little bit of background on tobacco. Before that, it was made into a big business. It had ceremonial use. And tobacco was first cultivated and utilized by the Native Americans for traditional and sacred uses. Uh, casual smoking was not a thing then. Uh, and when it was used by indigenous people, the way that it was in inhaled was different. It wasn't the way, the way that we use it in recreational use. And if you look at the pictures on there, the, the plants are different. You have one that is mass produced uh, for sale and then another one that is grown in the wild. So slaves were originally uh, brought from Africa to farm tobacco crops. Uh, tobacco crops became in large demand uh, when it first went into Europe. And after centuries of, of uh, slavery, African Americans are the biggest consumers of mentholated products today. They used to make us picket, but now tobacco and vape companies have us addicted to smoking. Black people have a long oppressive history with tobacco. Did you know that we are the descendants of the slaves that were brought here and forced to pick tobacco, making the master rich? Just look, look at our neighborhood today. Stores that sell these tobacco and vape products are near the schools where our kids learn. Tobacco and vape companies use black, brown, and poor communities as dumping grounds for these deadly products. We think they're doing us a favor by selling cheaper in our neighborhood. These companies are making money off our addiction until we die, only to be replaced by our kids. The next generation of addicted smokers. They even advertise 10 times more in black communities to ensure that we see, use, and get hooked on these products. Do you believe nicotine is not addictive? I believe nicotine is not addictive, yes. I don't believe that nicotine or our products are addictive. Oh, okay, I get it. Mama, I think we're still slaves. Our people are addicted, and now there's all these new vape products. I heard there's 15,000 flavors, like menthol, fruit, candy, alcohol, and even food, like chicken and waffles. Wait, 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 wait. Chicken and waffles? And just like the master, tobacco and vape companies are slaving us too. Man, this is not cool. There is a target on the back of the black community, y'all. And tobacco and vape companies put it there. We see you. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We, we see, see you. you. We must break the chains of addiction. Come on, man. Let's break free. Let's get this poison out of our stores and out of our communities. Be the generation that ends smoking for our people. So that was a commercial that we did not too long ago uh, that we had made and we're going to have it aired and everything uh, just to express uh, the community and flavors and how that has an impact on our community. Um, so we put that together not too long ago. Uh, it was very exciting and uh, very good content to put out. 
Um, so let's see for the next one. So a couple of things that we have here are for the um, are for different flavors. So we're doing this because these products bring youth comfort. These are items that we're familiar with. Um, and usually they give us a sense of familiarity. And so uh, usually these products, they kind of look kind of cool. And then they usually lead to nicotine addiction because there's something that uh, there are things that we are familiar with, like I said before. So I wanted to kind of let everybody um, pick out which one they thought. Now there are two different rows here. The first row of four has one vape product in it. And the next row of four has another vape product in it. So I wanted people to kind of go into the chat. One, um, so we can do an A, we can do an A, B, C, D. And if you could just put in the chat, which one of these four you believe is a vape product. You know, actually, I can't see the chat. Twyla, can you see the chat? I can see the chat. And it looks like uh, everyone is choosing A. Absolutely. OK, thank you, Twyla. So A is the vape product. As you can see, it's called Candy King. And it looks similar to a lot of to Sour Patches, which is right next to it. Um, and so then on the bottom row, uh, we have another set of four, um, A, B, C, and D. Um, and one of these is also a, a vape flavor. Could you enter into the chat which one you think is a vape flavor? Almost there. They're all correct, all B. All B, okay, absolutely. Well, thank you for participating, guys. I just wanted to go ahead and I wanted to make it clear how, uh, how alike these products look. So this is another one here um, and it's pretty straightforward, A through D. Um, you can just go ahead and throw that into the chat whenever you kind of figure it out. Um, and I'll wait a couple of seconds and then I'll kind of just go ahead and say it. I won't spend as much time on the last one. So just to go ahead and put it out there. So the one on this one is surprisingly actually the hot dog one is not the vape. It's actually C that is the vape. And then we got one more for you on which one does not belong. Okay. And this is two rows here, A, B, C, and D, and then a separate one, A, B, C, and D. So you can just throw those in the chat whenever you figure out which one is the vape product. I know some of these, depending on if you're familiar with seeing them or not, um, this may be mad easy for you. Uh, I guess maybe to the untrained eye, it may not be as easy. Um, we have some selections here. Uh, D, B, A, B, D, and A. Okay. For the, for the, first, um, for the first row. For the first row. Okay, got it. So for the first row, so some of you, um, so some of people said this one. Um, this one is definitely apple juice. This one is the vape juice right here, um, which is, I remember actually when I first saw this one, uh, when I first came aboard uh, about a year ago, I was shook. I, I did not know this was vape juice. Um, and then for the second row, I don't know if you guys already entered for the second row, but um, the vape is this one. This, that is this one right here. This is, these are the vape juices uh, and these are the candies. And thanks again, guys, for your participation on that one. Okay, so now examples of targeted advertising include vape juice and racist products like chicken and waffles, like you heard in the video. Uh, so Jewel and Blue have a very provocative and specifically advertised uh, campaign to Blacks and youth uh, and the new, to try to make a new generation of smokers. If you can see like the Roco's chicken and waffles at the bottom there. 
And so here's another example of advertising in communities of color. Uh, the tobacco industry brands smoking as if it is a, like the American way since the original branding of tobacco. Um, oral nicotine pouches, lozenges are also a new category of tobacco um, that's used to bring in new smokers. Um, and that's, this includes brands like Zen and On and Velo. Uh, Velo, you see photographed right there. Um, and then also I have some photos here. Uh, you see the Marlboro line, which is um, clearly an Asian man. And then you have um, also the Newport ads and also Icos ad, which is this one right here, uh, which is a smokeless vape. We'll go into that a little bit more later. So people are targeted by different things. They're targeted by their race, ethnicity, income, mental health status, gender, and sexual orientation. And here are a couple more provocative ads for you guys as well. So all secondhand smoke is harmful. Uh, hookah, vapes, cigarillos, marijuana, all of those things when smoked are dangerous uh, to smokers and those around them. The danger of secondhand smoke uh, is that it can stay in the air for up to three hours. It can, it can take up to two weeks to travel up to 20 feet. And there's no risk-free level of secondhand smoke exposure. It's estimated that secondhand smoke causes nearly 34,000 heart disease deaths each year during the years from 2005 to 2009 to adult non-smokers in the United States. So here are some other tobacco products just to give you uh, some examples. The first one uh, to the top left are called lolly tops and those are flavored hookah tips. Um, and so um, those are like more of a disposable method. Um, and then you have hookah, uh, blunt wraps. You have uh, the pouch tobacco. One of them is called snooze to the far uh, to the bottom left, and all of them come in a variety of flavors. And so uh, the problem with these is that policymakers are making the mistake of exempting the mint and the menthol flavors, assuming that youth are no longer using these flavors, um, and that is a mistake because it is a uh, starter flavor. So 48,000 American, African Americans die annually from using menthol flavored products. Um, as you know, the most popular flavor amongst African Americans, as I've stated, and young and newly starting smokers. Nine out of 10 African Americans uh, prefer menthol cigarettes over normal cigarettes. And data collection done in Sacramento and research on a state and national level prove that uh, more African Americans would quit if menthols were banned, which they are now in the city. Um, and they are also sold cheaper in uh, poor or black neighborhoods uh, than affluent neighborhoods. So menthol is also the number one flavor added to products. Um, it anesthetizes the throat so people can smoke and inhale in more and more deeply, which can lead to more severe uh, respiratory health conditions. So flavors come in products that are familiar to us. As I said before, uh, like sriracha, apple juice, other candies and fruit that are enticing. And these flavors sometimes look so much like kid-friendly products that it's hard to tell them apart. Uh, that's why I had us do that exercise earlier. Um, and as you can see here, we have like the lychee, the uh, sriracha, we have Nilla wafers right here. Um, I love banana pudding, so that's just hurtful. Um, and then you see uh, the puff bar examples to the bottom right. Uh, which just have a whole variety of flavors. Which like in the video, I think Angelique Aspie said, these are flavors that adults usually would not turn to. Uh, I know adult, some, some adults do, but the targeting is very blatant. Flavors do not just refer to vapes. Um, they also refer, uh, another relevant conversation is with cigarillos or blunt wraps. Um, and these flavored tobacco products are especially dangerous because uh, they're popular. Um, you know, you see a lot of televised cigarettes, but you know, a lot of in music and things like that is where you'll see like, you know, a Backwood or a Swisher or something like that. So here's another video done by some of our soldiers. Um, and our soldiers are our, um, are our youth that um, do some tobacco control work. Um, so this is a video that they did uh, not too long ago regarding flavors. There are games being played on my people. Games being played on we. Games being played on my people. And that game is stopping with me. There are games being played on my people. Games being played on we. 
Games being played on my people. That game is stopping with me. Fruity flavored tobacco, place low enough for many girls to see. Backward and game leaves all in her speech. This is no mistake. Don't get played. I refuse to stand by and buy into corporations that aim to ruin our communities. There are entire marketing divisions that meet marketing our black babies to buy more swish and sweets. Making a profit off the hood without a profit for you or me. There's nothing we gain from smoking in school, thinking it's cool. Their homie don't get played. Put us in a maze and we'll find cheese. Three liquor stores to our four corners and we'll find heavy coughing and deep breathing. The weight of tobacco billboards are much more fatal than they make them seem. They carry the blood of all our relatives lost to smoking, cancer, stage four, loved ones, no more. Tobacco companies are not innocent. They are guilty. See the death and they marketing scheme. Preserve your longevity. Our lives are worth more than a quick hit of poison in our community. There are games being played on my people. Games being played over me. Games being played on my people. That game is stopping with me. There are games being played on my people. Games being played over me. Games being played on my people. That game is stopping with me. All right, so like I said, that was a video from our soldiers, which are youth that represent tobacco control efforts. Uh, we're currently looking for more youth who want to participate and be engaged in products like and projects like that. Uh, so, you know, if that was if you thought that was tight, uh, let me know. Send us an email um, if you want to be involved in something like that. I definitely know I want to see more stuff like that made. <laughs> All right, guys. So. Heart disease and cancer are both tobacco related, are both tobacco related diseases, um, not completely, but are, and they're the top two leading causes of death among African Americans, um, and particularly males. So males experience higher levels of lung cancer, and experts believe that the racial differences in um, smoking habits, socioeconomic factors, um, and the metabolism of tobacco carcinogens may all play a role. So lung cancer kills more African Americans than any other type of cancer. In 2013, more than 24,000 new cases of lung cancer were estimated to occur among African Americans. More than 16,000 African Americans were estimated to die from the disease. So a federal survey shows 27.5% of all high school students have used the e-cigarette in the past 30 days. Um, this survey was concluded in 2019. Researchers found that youth who lived in homes with strict rules were far less likely to use a tobacco product rather than their peers in permissive homes. Uh, when teams lived in homes that forbade all tobacco, residents were less likely to use it than kids whose parents simply just talked to them about tobacco. So the vape industry has social campaigns that promote vaping in a very carefree and mature manner. Um, and that comes off uh, much more modern and trendy than the traditional cigarette. So as we became shockingly aware um, of the dangers of vape, uh, with the influx of youth hospitalized in 2017, it was a huge eye opener how dangerous these products are. This chart shows the, start, the, the stats of, va of arriving vape users uh, in middle to high school students in 2019. So it starts at eighth grade and then uh, goes to 12th grade here. So as you may know, Juul was one of the, uh, one of the leading companies in creating vape devices. Uh, that's why Juul has become a verb. You hear people say like, I'm, uh, I'm Juuling or do you Juul? Um, which all usually refers to vape devices. It doesn't even have to be a, uh, a Juul device per se. Uh, initially, their online, their online youth presence on social media was very popular and very trendy and attracted youth. And although the website is tailored towards a clinical approach for quitting adults, um, I just wanted to feature Juul because their ads had one of the first, uh, well, one of the first most popular brands to market to youth. 
Um, and there were several air, several vape products on the market, like Blue, Icos, uh, Vapresso, um, and all of these devices are chargeable with USBs, and some of them are disposable. So the rise of vape products promotes a new generation of smokers. Uh, the, vaping is the vaping is the inhaling of a vapor created by electronic cigarette or another vape or other vaping device. Most vapes are flavored and even those without nicotine. Studies show that when, a heat, when heated flavors and other chemicals in e-liquid may harm the lungs, some other types of vapes are pod vapes, there are hookah pens, uh, mods, tanks, uh, e-shishas, and all of them have a battery that heat up in a, uh, in e a liquid called e-liquid. So photographed here, we have the co-founder of Jewel Labs in the House Senate, and he was swearing his statement about vapes having less risk than cigarettes. Uh, Jewel paid a charter school $134,000 for a summer camp to teach kids about healthy lifestyles. Um, and in April 2017, Jewel, uh, Jewel representative visited the school in New York City to in New York City to meet with students, tell them about the products with no staff, uh, with no staff around. Um, and this is extremely dangerous because then when you have people going out and talking to students directly, um, that's uh, and when you don't have anyone present to disprove what is going on or there's no education going on, um, you start to see trends like we've been seeing. So Evali is the name given by the CDC for a new uh, dangerous, newly identified lung, dis uh, lung disease linked to vaping. Evali stands for e-cigarette or vape associated lung injury. And there is not one particular chemical in pods that are causing the severe injury. Uh, harmful metals and chemicals that are included in e-cigarettes. So tobacco and vape industries have been known to sponsor different events such as like NASCAR, or uh, like you can see this, um, this blue concert right here. And vape companies host concerts like it's posted there and social gatherings to bring in a younger crowd and often give away free products to smoke and merchandise to wear. Statistics show that this method of advertising gets you more teens and young adults to smoke. Even when there are laws and regulations against the targeting of teens and ethnic groups, tobacco and vape companies usually still kind of find a way uh, to get to the next generation. So you may recall that uh, some cigarette companies could not advertise on TV any longer, but um, you still see a lot of smoking going on. I know there was some bans on Netflix and things like that on some smoking, but there's still smoking virtually everywhere, whether it is in music or even on social media, it has become a part of the new social norm. And that's been a part of the new social norm, excuse me. So the industry is uh, making, making social a new smoke, social norm with vaping and through social influencers and new products that are growing in popularity. And a new generation is taking place of the smokers who are dying or sick. Most vapes are designed to be discreet and many of them look like USB drives, highlighters, colorful metallic pens or small flashlights. Uh, and most of the time, parents and non-smokers don't know that they're looking at a vape. Um, I was almost even thinking the ones on the far right look like a juicy fruit, like the, uh, the gum from a distance. So um, moods and switches in behavior are normal with youth, uh, with everybody. But uh, you see this a little bit more with smoking. Um, there, you can see this a lot with drastic vape use. Smokers will seem restless or irritated due to nicotine withdrawal. Um, and smoking or vaping can also cause nosebleeds uh, and the vapes dry out the sinuses resulting in nosebleeds if uh, used, to, used too much. So sometimes you'll notice an unexplained sweet smell. Uh, you'll find cotton balls that are used to clean the metallic wire that heats up, that causes the heat for the liquid and unfamiliar charges and batteries. So what parents can do to, uh, help uh, to, for prevention for their kids, parents or teachers. Uh, but for parents, do not use any tobacco products at home. Um, that is always a great way to make sure kids don't smoke. Uh, talk to your kids about the dangers of smoking and to yourself of those, and those around you. And educate your kids on e-cigarettes and how highly addictive those substances are. 
and also advocate for comprehensive tobacco prevention policies. Um, it's always good to teach a little bit about advocacy, but then also something that can give them some healthy education is, is good as well. Um, so if you're also, if you're interested in that, interested in more information on uh, promoting some uh, comprehensive tobacco policies, let us know. Um, my email will be at the end. Or if you want us to reach out to you, throw your information in the chat. And then uh, some things you may want to know if you want to talk to um, your kid or a student about vapes or tobacco prevention or using um, is to know the facts, get credible information. Um, there's a website there, the e-cigarettes at the surgeongeneral.gov is a great place to start. Um, I'll have some more resources for you at the end as well. Um, so be patient, ready to listen, avoid criticism and encourage an open dialogue. Uh, remember that your goal is to have a conversation, not to deliver a lecture. And also it's okay for your conversation to take part over little bits of time. Uh, here are some more resources that can be found online. Some of these provide online chat services, phone services, clinical in-person approaches. You can find uh, just information on here if you wanna find more to read about, if you uh, wanna have a student uh, find some resources, you wanna find, have your child find some resources. Um, all of these are a great place to start. If you want to take a picture of it or something or however you want to work that out. Okay, so our soldiers, as I referred to earlier with uh, the video it was made, the soldiers are the project, our soul projects, youth advocates for tobacco control. The youth are involved in volunteer opportunities that specialize in tobacco prevention and, re and related to civic engagement. They receive, uh, they receive training and participate in civic engagement opportunities to participate in tobacco awareness, uh, tobacco awareness activities in the community. And also you get a chance to participate in virtual conferences that happen statewide uh, with other youth who are also doing the same things, the same activities. This picture, and so, uh, you may recognize this from the video, it's from an artistic expression event that we had. And so the soldiers, um, they actually helped, they helped speak to decision makers to adopt a flavor restriction ordinance. And as a result, uh, as a result of their involvement, the city of Sacramento ended up passing the ordinance. Um, and the youth took the stand to speak about why the ordinance was important to them. Uh, this ended up being a very key factor in the decision making for uh, that youth perspective. Um, and uh, the ordinance ended up being passed. Uh, so a lot of these same opportunities are available to the youth here at San Juan Unified School District. Uh, like I said, let me know if any of those things, the civic engagement or the artistic activities speak to you, uh, let us know. Um, absolutely. And let's see here. Perfect. And so the uh, Soul Project is currently conducting public opinion polls to see what communities feel like about uh, certain products or uh, secondhand smoke policies. So uh, we have a survey. Um, and if you wouldn't mind taking it, I'll enter it into the chat. Um, but then other than that, thank you guys so much for allowing me to talk to you about the predatory marketing in African-American communities and other communities of color. It has been a true pleasure. Thank you.